Welcome to Enavana Green Cleaning. We're excited to be working with you. As a new employee of Enavana Green Cleaning, you are now part of one of the fastest growing industries, residential cleaning. You're also part of one of the nation's first residential house cleaning companies that was created specifically with green cleaning as its primary focus. You're now an important part of Enavana Green Cleaning. We value and respect you and your role with us. House cleaning used to be associated with only wealthy people. However, as more dual working families came into being, free time became very limited. Nowadays, families don't want to spend their valuable free time cleaning their home. They would much prefer to hire Enovana Green Cleaning and have you clean their home so they can spend their time doing something else. That's why house cleaning is one of the fastest growing industries. It isn't because everyone is suddenly wealthy. It isn't because people are lazy. It's because people are busy and they want to maximize their free time by not cleaning their own home. Advances in technology have also transformed the residential cleaning industry. Today's house cleaners benefit from technology in ways prior generations could not foresee. For example, most customers pay for their cleaning with a credit card that your office handles. You'll also use an iPad for driving navigation and to read about any special instructions a customer may have. Whether you are joining Enovana Green Cleaning as a new hire or you're transitioning from another company, you will notice how technology is making your job more effective and more efficient. The company we now know as Enovana Green Cleaning was officially formed in September 2007. However, at that time, it had only had one employee, me. My fiance at the time, now my wife, was cleaning homes in her spare time. Once she elected to attend nursing school, I decided to assume her role in cleaning. That's when the groundwork for Enovana Green Cleaning began. Initially, the company was called Triangle Green Cleaning. I named the company after the region in North Carolina that shared the triangle name, Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. During this early period, I did everything. I cleaned homes, met with prospective customers, handled marketing and advertising, and maintained financial records, all the while keeping my eye on the future. I knew the success of the company would be determined by the systems I created and the employees I hired. I finally hired my first house cleaning employee. I then quickly hired more and more employees. Within two years, Enovana Green Cleaning was cleaning about 200 homes a month. From there, growth occurred very rapidly. I was able to oversee this growth in my company all while preparing for the next phase, replicating the cleaning model. The first topic we will cover involves professionalism. There is a reason why the training begins with professionalism and not the actual cleaning parts. Professionalism is what sets Enovano Green Cleaning apart from other companies. Professionalism will also improve the satisfaction of your customers, which will then in turn make your job easier and more satisfying. Professionalism isn't just the way in which you interact with customers. Of course, that is a big part of it. However, professionalism is more than that. It is how you interact with management. Do you show up for work on time? Do you communicate openly and honestly with your managers? It is how you conduct yourself in a customer's home. Do you follow the rules by not eating inside their home? Do you avoid using your phone while inside a customer's home? As you can see, professionalism involves the general manner in which you conduct yourself. It's how you treat your coworkers. It's how you act inside a home. It's how you interact with management. It's all the things that will make you a better employee and person. The first topic we'll discuss is your physical appearance. You are required to wear an Enovana green cleaning shirt at all times while working. This identifies you to the customer. It also reinforces the type of professionalism being emphasized in this section. Your manager will provide more details on what your uniform will look like. However, there are a few requirements outside of the actual Enovana green cleaning uniform that you must abide by. You are required to wear non-slip, closed-toed shoes. Examples include sneakers and clogs. You are not allowed to wear loose jewelry since the jewelry could accidentally scratch something inside the customer's home. Hair should be well-groomed and pulled back if it's long. This is to ensure your safety while cleaning. Remember, the way you look and carry yourself represents not only yourself, but Enovana Green Cleaning as well. That's why your Enovana Green Cleaning location may also have additional rules related to the type of pants or shorts allowed, policies governing body piercings and tattoos, and maybe even restrictions on excessive use of perfume. 
Your local Enovana Green Cleaning may also provide access to supplemental clothing and equipment, such as aprons and knee pads. Your manager will provide more clarity to you about these additional policies and clothing equipment options. The second topic we'll discuss relates to rules while you are inside a customer's home. These rules are clear examples of professionalism. They help differentiate you and Enovana Green Cleaning from all the other competition. 1. Do not use your cell phone inside a customer's home. If there is an emergency, you must contact your manager so you can resolve the situation. 2. Do not eat any food inside the customer's home. Of course, if the customer offers you something to eat, then you are allowed to accept that. 3. Do not use any of the customer's appliances, equipment, furniture, or electronics for your personal use. Those items belong to the customer and they should be left alone. Being dependable is also a key component to being professional. This means arriving to work when you are scheduled. This means providing adequate notice when you need to take a day off work. It also means being willing to help your coworkers when needed. After all, we are all in this together. The final part of professionalism we will discuss is the need for clear, open, and concise communication with management. Remember, management is on your side. They are there to help you with your job. As such, it is very important that you are honest at all times and you are willing to be a team player. You need to be available throughout your shift in case management needs to change your schedule. There may also be times when management needs to update the instructions for a home you are cleaning. Green cleaning refers to using cleaning methods and products with environmentally friendly ingredients and procedures which are designed to preserve human health and environmental quality. Green cleaning techniques and products avoid the use of products which contain toxic chemicals, some of which emit volatile organic compounds causing respiratory, dermatological, and other conditions. In other words, green cleaning means using products that keep people, animals, and the environment safe. Enovana Green Cleaning is proud to follow this definition of green cleaning. The next time someone asks you what green cleaning is, you will know the answer. You may also wonder what makes Enovana Green Cleaning a green cleaning company. Here are a few examples of why we call ourselves a green company. All of the cleaning products we use are free of ammonia, chlorine, phosphates, and synthetic fragrances. All the vehicles we use are fuel efficient. We clean with cloth rags that are washed daily instead of using paper towels. We buy supplies from local suppliers whenever possible. We have a robust recycling program at our corporate office and franchise locations. As you can see, Enovana Green Cleaning doesn't just use the word green in its name. At its core, Enovana Green Cleaning is committed to a safe environment. Enovana Green Cleaning puts to practice a set of procedures that help make the world a little safer for everyone, including you. 
For those of you not used to green cleaning, you may wonder if the products actually work. The answer is yes. Our products do work just as well as other harsh products. That's why customers want to work with Enovana Green Cleaning. They are attracted to the green cleaning that Enovana Green Cleaning provides. They know that the safe yet effective products that Enovana Green Cleaning provides won't harm their children and their pets. The added benefit is to you, the employee. Green cleaning makes your job safer and more pleasant. You don't have to worry about breathing in harmful fumes while cleaning. You don't have to worry about burning your skin with a harsh cleaning product. You don't have to worry about cleaning with something that could be harmful to your health. Green cleaning makes a difference in keeping a healthy environment for you and the customers. Unlike some cleaning companies, you won't be carrying an excessive amount of cleaning products and equipment. Enovana Green Cleaning likes to keep things simple for you and the customer. There is no need to carry multiple items because our products and equipment are effective in all the different rooms of a home. You can be more effective by having a streamlined yet effective set of cleaning products and equipment. Enovana Green Cleaning puts your health, safety, and the environment at the top of our priorities. By using only natural green cleaning products and materials, we're ensuring the clean you need without the risk associated with industrial cleaners. We only use three primary cleaning products. One, Castile soap. Two, baking soda. Three, vinegar. Castile soap. Castile soap is a soap made from vegetable oils. Traditionally, it is composed of olive oil, lye, and water, but can also contain butters, aloe vera gel, essential oils, and salt. It is considered a green product because it is non-toxic, safe to use for cleaning, and biodegradable. In an effort to use only greenest cleaning products for our customers, we have developed our own proprietary formula of Castile soap. What this means is that no other company can use the same type of Castile soap we use. Through years of trial and error, we have developed the perfect formula for cleaning homes. This makes your job easier and your customers happier. You will be using the Castile soap as an all-purpose cleaner. Instead of using more traditional all-purpose cleaners like Clorox or Fabuloso, you will use our Castile soap. Because it is not harmful to most surfaces, you will be using it on everything from kitchen countertops to baseboards. Because we add essential oils to the soap, you will even be able to use it in the bathrooms and kitchens. Baking soda. Baking soda is used in places that need scrubbing or scouring. Examples of these areas include bathtubs, showers, sink basins, and tile. We use baking soda in place of more traditional products such as Ajax or Comet. You will find that the baking soda is a very effective cleaner without all the harsh side effects of those other cleaners. Vinegar. Vinegar is used to mop floors and clean glass surfaces such as mirrors and windows. 
we use vinegar in the place of more traditional floor cleaning products such as Mop and Go or Murphy's Oil. The vinegar also replaces more traditional glass cleaning products such as Windex or Zep. Our vinegar is diluted with water so you don't even have to worry about the smell. You will find that vinegar is a very effective yet safe product to use on glass surfaces. The primary piece of cleaning equipment you will use is a vacuum cleaner. Oftentimes, the most durable vacuum cleaners are the most heavy. Conversely, the lightest vacuums are also the least durable. Over the years, we have learned that the Shark vacuum cleaners are the best option because they are the best balance between durability and weight. We are confident that you will find them very effective for cleaning floors, yet easy to carry and move around. We use these other types of primary cleaning equipment and tools. Brooms, mops, grout brushes, toilet brushes, lamb's wool dusters, extend dusters, sponges, terry cloth cleaning rags. You will be provided with a cleaning caddy that you will take inside each home. The caddy will consist of the items listed previously in addition to various spray bottles, baking soda dispensers, and rinse cups. You will also have a large assortment of terry cloth rags. We will cover some of these items in more detail in later sections of this video when we discuss how to clean in specific rooms. What happens if a customer asks you to use their cleaning supplies and or equipment? That is allowed, but your manager must approve of this request. Generally, requests like that are sent directly from the customer to the office, then communicated to you. However, if a customer asks this directly to you, then politely tell them you have to contact your manager before considering their request. Some examples of this include a customer wanting you to use their vacuum cleaner or when a customer asks you to use their bathroom cleaning product. This is acceptable if your manager approves. This is acceptable even if the product they are providing is not considered green. Enovana Green Cleaning strives to meet customer demand by allowing them to provide their own products when requested. You are never allowed to use the customer's cleaning products, tools, or equipment without approval from your manager. Even if you have an equipment failure or you run out of a cleaning product, it is never acceptable to use something in the customer's home without approval. This is considered theft. The personal belongings inside a customer's home are not yours. Do not use them without approval, no matter the circumstance. Before we begin our discussion about the specific cleaning services offered by Enovana Green Cleaning, it is important to mention the importance of standardization. Consistency among crews is very important. That way it doesn't matter what crew has cleaned a home before. If everyone follows the same set of standards, then the customer shouldn't even notice if different crews are cleaning their home. If different crews are providing different services on different visits, then the customer will likely notice this inconsistency. 
So as we start discussing more specifics about the services offered, always remember to provide no more and no less when it comes to what you are cleaning. If everyone is providing the exact same set of services, then customers won't become accustomed to seeing different results. They will expect the same rooms and areas cleaned at each visit regardless of which team is cleaning. This will allow anyone at Enovana Green Cleaning to provide the same high quality of cleaning. Enovana Green Cleaning specializes in the general cleaning of a home. We provide basic cleaning services to bathrooms, kitchens, and common areas. We'll present an overview of what is included in a regular cleaning for each of the major rooms of a home. In the bathrooms, showers and tubs will be scrubbed and rinsed, both inside and out. Toilets will be wiped down and scrubbed. We will also clean the counters, floors, mirrors, cabinet doors, and light fixtures. Trash cans will be emptied and commonly missed areas such as baseboards, doors, and door frames will be cleaned. In the kitchen, we'll make sure that the sink basin has been completely cleaned and wiped down. All counters will be cleaned. We'll clean up the stovetop and inside of the microwave. The exterior of all the appliances will also be wiped clean. Floors will be cleaned, trash will be removed, and the baseboards, windowsills, and door frames will be dusted. Common areas include the living room, dining room, and other areas where a family might sit down to relax. In these rooms, ceiling fans will be dusted and cobwebs will be removed. Any trash will be collected and floors will be vacuumed and or mopped. We take care to clean all the overlooked areas as well, such as baseboards, window sills, door and window frames, and light fixtures. Please note that even though bedrooms are not considered common areas, the same services are still provided. We'll dust, vacuum, remove trash, and change linens. We also change the linens on the beds. Enovana Green Cleaning also offers several services that customers can pay extra money to have performed. Some customers may never choose any of these extras, whereas others will choose to have all of them performed. But remember, consistency is important. That means you should never provide an extra service to a customer that hasn't requested it. The following services are not included in standard cleaning, but will often be added as extras. The inside of the refrigerator, the inside of the oven, the inside of the kitchen cabinets, the inside of the bathroom cabinets, the glass panes on the inside of windows, vacuuming upholstery, damp wiping, baseboards, window sills, window ledges, door frames, etc. Even though Enovana Green Cleaning provides a vast selection of services, there are still some things that are never offered. You or anyone else at Enovana Green Cleaning never perform the following tasks. Washing dishes, filling or emptying a dishwasher, washing, drying, or folding laundry, cleaning walls, scrubbing floors on hands and knees, hardwood floor refinishing, carpet cleaning, moving furniture, moving boxes or anything similarly sized, removing the burners on stoves, cleaning the underside of the cooktop on the stove, cleaning anything on the outside of the home, cleaning electronic equipment such as televisions and computers, cleaning musical equipment such as guitars and drums, cleaning the linens on bunk beds, cleaning anything above 15 feet, cleaning of animal or human waste such as blood and urine.
Enovana Grain Cleaning prioritizes the safety of you and the customers you work with. Nobody benefits when an employee is injured. That employee is unable to work and earn wages. In fact, the employer can lose business since the employee can't work. As a result, creating and maintaining a safe work environment is critical to the success of Enovana Grain Cleaning. As we mentioned previously, this starts with the non-toxic cleaning products we use. The Castile soap, baking soda, and vinegar we use are safer versions of more traditional cleaning products. But did you know that safety also extends to the types of shoes you wear and how you conduct yourself while cleaning the inside of a home? Let's begin by discussing the type of shoes you are required to wear. You must wear non-slip, closed toe shoes. This can include various types of shoes such as sneakers, crocs, and boots. The closed toe aspect of these shoes protects your toes in the event something has dropped on them or if someone steps on your foot. The non-slip aspect helps decrease the risk of slipping and falling. This is just as important when you're cleaning a shower as it is when there is snow or ice on the ground. Maintaining your footing is very vital to keeping you safe. Being safe while cleaning also involves how you physically move. For example, you may feel the urge to rush through a cleaning. However, by slowing down and making methodical movements, you decrease your chance of getting hurt. Additionally, you should clean an area as far as you can reach without taking a step. This decreases the chance of you overextending your body unnecessarily. Never support yourself without anything attached to the wall. For example, you don't want to pull yourself out of a bathtub using the towel rack. Another example would be leaning against a soap dish. Most items attached to walls aren't securely bolted. Thus, they will come out of the wall easily, which means you could hurt yourself. Finally, you are prohibited from texting or using any electronic device while you are driving. The partner who is not driving is responsible for those types of things. They will be the one using a phone to call the office, using navigation systems to get directions, etc. As a driver, your most important priority is paying attention to what you are doing. Driving. Now that we have covered items such as professionalism, green cleaning, supplies, equipment, services provided, and safety, it's time to start talking about cleaning. After all, that's who we are, professional cleaners. Remember, there is more to cleaning than just the actual cleaning routines. That's why we covered all those other topics before we even started discussing how to clean. You will perform most of the prep work at the office. This is where you will fill supplies, obtain your schedule for the day, and receive general information from management. This is also where you will start reviewing the customer notes for the homes you will be cleaning that day. It is important to perform this initial review of the notes in case you have any immediate questions. Once you are packed and ready for the day, it's time to drive to your first house. Since you will have already stocked up on all your supplies for the day, we're going to focus on what you do upon arriving at a home. 
it is mandatory that you read any notes about the customer prior to entering the home. These notes will include information such as special cleaning instructions, how you will get inside the house, if the customer has an alarm, etc. Think about how bad it would be if you didn't read those notes but just opened the door to a home setting off the alarm. Had you read the notes, you would have known about the alarm. You never want to enter into a home without first reading about this information. This also applies to homes you may clean a lot. Sometimes these notes will get updated so you don't want to assume you already know everything about that house. Instructions can and do change. For example, the customer may have gotten a new pet since your last visit. The last thing you want to do is accidentally let the pet outside while you're trying to get inside the house. After reading about these customer notes, you will want to get all your supplies and equipment ready to take inside the house. You don't want to make multiple trips back and forth from the house to the car. As a result, consolidate everything you'll need and make one trip to the house. You only need to take enough supplies and equipment inside to finish that house. You don't need to take a whole day's worth of supplies and equipment inside. You will know beforehand how to enter inside the home. The customer may be home to let you inside. You might have a house key or the door may be left unlocked. Having read your customer notes, you will know which method is being used. Regardless of how you will get inside, you must always knock on the door or ring the doorbell to announce yourself. Even if you have a key, you don't want to surprise or scare the customer when you go inside. The customer could be home but may not realize you have arrived. When greeting a customer, you must always be friendly and polite. Additionally, you will want to introduce yourself by saying your name. This identifies who you are, comes across as professional, and tends to make the customer more at ease with you. After all, you are a guest in their home, so you want to show respect at all times. Rules that apply to cleaning any room. Clean around the room in the same direction, left to right or right to left. Clean the room from top to bottom. Check your work when finished. Does the room look neat and clean? Bathrooms will be the first area of a home we will train you to clean. Bathrooms, along with all other rooms, follow the same general strategy. Clean top to bottom and left to right, or right to left. This ensures you don't accidentally miss cleaning an area and it also makes you become more efficient. This takes the guesswork out of keeping up with what you have and haven't cleaned. The following steps should be taken when cleaning a bathroom. 1. Immediately look for mold or mildew in the areas around the sink, bathtub, and shower. Spray Castile soap on these areas and let it soak while you clean other parts of the bathroom. This allows the Castile soap to work for you while working on other areas of the bathroom. 2. Remove any throw rugs on the floor. Vacuum or shake them outside of the bathroom. Leave them outside the bathroom until the end. 3. 
Next, you will want to check areas for excessive hair. Likely spots include sink, bathtub, and shower drains. The reason for this is because you can vacuum the hair while it's still dry. Vacuuming dry hair is easier than cleaning up wet hair. 4. Now use your Extend Duster to clean around the top of the walls near the ceiling and down to the floor. You will want to pay special attention to the corners since cobwebs tend to concentrate there. Don't forget to dust along the bottom of the bathroom cabinets. Remember to go around the room in the same direction, left to right or right to left. 5. Now that the high parts of the bathroom are cleaned, you will need to clean the light fixtures on the ceiling and the sink mirror. This is best done using a lamb's wool duster. Be very careful doing this since the glass and light bulbs in these fixtures can be broken easily. 6. Time to clean the bathtub and showers. Start by spraying vinegar on the glass shower door. Now take some baking soda and spread it over the glass door. You will want to let this sit for about 10 minutes while you clean other parts of the shower and bathtub. Seven, now begin spraying your Castile soap on all bathtub and shower walls. Use your tile brush and sponge along with some baking soda to clean these walls. You may have to reapply the soap and or use more baking soda if you can't remove the mold and mildew with this first attempt. Eight, the fixtures and drains need to look clean and shiny. This is best done using a dry rag. Simply take the dry rag and polish the fixtures so that they are shiny and without fingerprints or smudges. Even though this is an easy task, it is very important since customers can easily notice when fixtures haven't been cleaned. Nine, now it's time to clean the shower door. Use your sponge and a little more vinegar to clean the door top to bottom. Make sure the glass is clean and without smudges when you are finished. 10. Moving on to the sink. Using soap and baking soda, clean the inside of the sink basin. Pay special attention to drain area. Make sure it is clean and polished afterwards. 11. You will also need to clean the counter of the sink using Castile soap. Pick up any items on the sink and clean underneath them. Make sure to put those items back in their original spot. Most customers leave personal items on the sink, so it's very important to clean underneath everything. 12. Now is a good time to clean the sink fixtures. Make sure the handles and bases are clean. You may even need to use a tile brush to clean around those intricate areas. As with all fixtures, polishing them with a dry rag is very important. Customers tend to notice shiny fixtures before they notice anything else. 13. The last part of a bathroom sink that needs cleaning is the mirror. Using vinegar, clean the mirror from top to bottom. Pay special attention to smudges since customers will easily see if their mirror hasn't been cleaned. If you cannot reach the top of the mirror, then use a squeegee. Use dry rags to buff or polish the mirror after using the vinegar. Fourteen, cleaning toilets is also a major part of bathroom cleanings. Using a combination of soap and baking soda, clean the inside of the toilet bowl, the toilet seat, the outside of the toilet, and the toilet tank. Make sure to clean under the rim of the toilet since this area is often overlooked. Remember to keep your toilet brush separate from any other cleaning tools you have.
15. Now it's time to dust. Using your lamb's wool duster, you will need to clean around any windows. This includes the blinds, window sills, and window frames. 16. You also need to dust any shelves or other furniture. 17. Dusting also includes the tops of door frames, the doors themselves, and baseboards. Use a damp rag if needed. 18. Clean the outside of the cabinets. This can be done with a damp rag. Don't forget to shine and polish the door handles on these cabinets. 19. Since you already have a damp rag, it's a good time to clean any electrical outlet plates and light switches, removing fingerprints and smudges. 20. Refold any towels that are hanging. This small gesture will be appreciated by the customer. Twenty-one. Take the trash and dump it into a consolidated trash bag outside of the bathroom. If you do not see a trash can, then check underneath the sink. 22. Floors are the last area to clean. Vacuum the floors, first paying special attention to the corners, areas around the toilet, and underneath the cabinets. 23. After vacuuming, you will need to mop. Using one cup of vinegar per one gallon of water is considered the ideal mixture. Do not put the throw rugs back onto the floors until they are completely dry. 24. After the floors dry, put the rugs back down. Now is also a good time to look around and double check your work. Has everything been cleaned and does it look neat? 
Rules that apply to cleaning any room. Clean around the room in the same direction, left to right or right to left. Clean the room from top to bottom. Check your work when finished. Does the room look neat and clean? Kitchens will be the next area of a home we will train you to clean. Remember what we discussed about going top to bottom and left to right or right to left when cleaning a bathroom? That also applies to the kitchen. Again, it ensures you don't accidentally miss cleaning an area and it also helps you become more efficient since you won't waste time and energy going back over areas already cleaned. The following steps should be taken when cleaning a kitchen. 1. Remove any throw rugs on the floor. Vacuum or shake them out on the kitchen floor. Since you will be cleaning the floors later on, shaking out the rugs now won't have a negative impact on your cleaning. 2. Now use your extend duster to clean around the top of the walls near the ceiling and down to the floor. You will want to pay special attention to the corners since cobwebs tend to concentrate there. Don't forget to dust along the bottom of the kitchen cabinets since this area tends to accumulate a lot of dirt and debris. Remember to go around the room in the same direction, left to right or right to left, so you don't miss anything. 3. Next up is the ceiling fan if there is one present. Clean the bottom and top of each fan blade. Gently clean the light fixture in the middle of the fan. 4. Now that the high parts of the kitchen are cleaned, you will need to clean any light fixtures present. This is best done using a lamb's wool duster. Be very careful doing this since the glass and light bulbs in these fixtures can be broken easily. 5. Clean the outside of the cabinets. Clean the upper and lower hanging ones. This can be done with a damp rag. Don't forget to shine and polish the door handles and hinges on these cabinets. 6. Now it's time to clean the kitchen sink. Using a combination of soap and baking soda, thoroughly clean the sink basin, paying special attention to areas that may need intensive scrubbing, such as the drain. Make sure it is clean and polished afterwards. 7. Now is a good time to clean the sink fixtures. Make sure the handles and bases are clean. You may even need to use a tile brush to clean around those intricate areas. As with all fixtures, polishing them with a dry rag is very important. Customers tend to notice shiny fixtures before they notice anything else. 8. Now clean the top of the stove using Castile soap. Carefully remove the grates and place them on the counter next to the stove. Be careful cleaning around the burners since they cannot come in contact with excessive amounts of water. You may have to re-clean some areas if staining is present. Carefully put the grates back after they are clean. 9. You will now need to clean all kitchen counters using Castile soap. Pick up any items on the sink and clean underneath. Make sure to put those items back in their original spot. Most customers leave items on the counters, so it's very important to clean underneath everything. 10. Remember to clean the backsplash in the kitchen. This is very important since it is often overlooked by professional cleaners. 11. Time to clean the appliances. If you recall, the inside of the oven and the inside of the refrigerator are not included in a standard cleaning. Remember you always have to clean the outside of these appliances, but on some occasions your manager may instruct you to clean the inside of them as well. Using soap and a rag, gently clean the outside of the refrigerator, oven, and dishwasher. Use a dry rag to polish if needed. Don't forget to clean the top of the refrigerator since that is often overlooked by cleaners. 12. Don't forget to clean the outside of the stove vent if one is present. This area tends to get very dirty from grease during cooking. 13. Next up is the microwave. You need to clean the inside and outside of the microwave at each visit. The top of the microwave is often overlooked, so don't forget to clean it. 14. Now it's time to dust. Using your lamb's wool duster, you will need to clean around any windows. This includes the blinds, window sills, and window frames. 15. You also need to dust any shelves or other furniture. 16. Dusting also includes the tops of door frames, the doors themselves, and baseboards. Use a damp rag if needed. 17. 
Since you already have a damp rag, it's a good time to clean any electrical outlet plates and light switches, removing fingerprints and smudges. 18. Refold any towels that are hanging, especially those around the stove and or sink. This small gesture will be appreciated by the customer. 19. Take the trash and dump it into a consolidated trash bag you are using to put all trash in. If you do not see a trash can, then check underneath the sink. 20. If recycling is present, then put the recycling in the customer's central container outside. 21. Floors are the last area to clean. Vacuum the floors first, paying special attention to the corners and underneath the cabinets. If there are kitchen chairs, you will need to move them so you can clean that area. Now would be a good time to use a damp rag to clean the chairs, including the legs. 22. After vacuuming, you will need to mop. Using one cup of vinegar per one gallon of water is considered the ideal mixture. Do not put the throw rugs back onto the floors until they are completely dry. 23. After the floors dry, put the rugs back down. Now is also a good time to look around and double check your work. Has everything been cleaned and does it look neat? Congratulations, you have now been trained on the proper way to clean a kitchen. Rules that apply to cleaning any room. Clean around the room in the same direction, left to right or right to left. Clean the room from top to bottom. Check your work when finished. Does the room look neat and clean? Common areas will be the next area of a home we will train you to clean. Common areas are rooms other than the kitchen and bathrooms. Rooms such as the living room, work office, or playroom would be considered a common area. We'll discuss bedrooms in the next section, so our focus now will be on any room that isn't a kitchen, bathroom, or bedroom. Once again, remember what we discussed about going top to bottom and left to right, or right to left, when cleaning a bathroom and kitchen? That also applies to common areas. Again, it ensures you don't accidentally miss cleaning an area, and it also helps you become more efficient, since you won't waste time and energy going back over areas already cleaned. The following steps should be taken when cleaning a common area. 1. 
Use your extend duster to clean around the top of the walls near the ceiling and down to the floor. You will want to pay special attention to the corners since cobwebs tend to concentrate there. Don't forget to dust along the bottom of furniture since these areas tend to accumulate a lot of dirt and debris. Remember to go around the room in the same direction, left to right or right to left, so you don't miss anything. 2. Now that the high parts of the walls are cleaned, you will need to clean any light fixtures present. This is best done using a lamb's wool duster. Be very careful doing this since the glass and light bulbs in these fixtures can be broken easily. 3. Now it's time to dust. Using your lamb's wool duster, you will need to clean around any windows. This includes the blinds, window sills, and window frame. 4. Next up is the ceiling fan. Clean the bottom and top of each fan blade. Gently clean the light fixture in the middle of the fan. 5. You also need to dust any shelves and other furniture. If you can easily pick up an object to dust underneath, then do so. If the item is heavy or bulky, then dust around the objects. If you pick up something, just make sure to put it back in the same spot. 6. Dusting also includes the tops of door frames, the doors themselves, and baseboards. Use a damp rag if needed. 7. Since you already have a damp rag, it's a good time to clean any electrical outlet plates and light switches, removing fingerprints and smudges. 8. Refold any blankets that may be on furniture and fluff any pillows on sofas. This will make the room look neat in addition to clean. Remember, making a room look neat is just as important as cleaning it. Customers will immediately notice when a room doesn't look neat, no matter how clean it may be. 9. Take the trash and dump it into a consolidated trash bag you are using to put all trash in. 10. Floors are the last area to clean. Vacuum the floors first, paying special attention to the corners and underneath furniture. 11. Vacuum any rugs that are present, making sure to lift up the edges of these rugs to vacuum underneath. 12. After vacuuming, you will need to mop if there is any non-carpeted flooring. If the room just has carpet, then there is no need to mop. Using one cup of vinegar per one gallon of water is considered the ideal mixture. 13. Now that everything is cleaned, it is also a good time to look around and double check your work. Has everything been cleaned and does it look neat? Congratulations, you have now been trained on the proper way to clean a common area. Rules that apply to cleaning any room. Clean around the room in the same direction, left to right or right to left. Clean the room from top to bottom. Check your work when finished. Does the room look neat and clean? Bedrooms will be the last area of a home we will train you to clean. As always, remember what we discussed about going top to bottom and left to right, or right to left, when cleaning the other rooms in a home. That also applies to bedrooms. 
Again, it ensures you don't accidentally miss cleaning an area and it also helps you become more efficient since you won't waste time and energy going back over areas already cleaned. The following steps should be taken when cleaning a bedroom. 1. Before changing the linens, use your extend duster to clean around the top of the walls near the ceiling and down to the floor. You will want to pay special attention to the corners since cobwebs tend to concentrate there. Don't forget to dust along the bottom of furniture and under the bed, since these areas tend to accumulate a lot of dirt and debris. Remember to go around the room in the same direction, left to right or right to left, so you don't miss anything. 2. Next up is the ceiling fan. Clean the bottom and top of each fan blade. Gently clean the light fixture in the middle of the fan. 3. Making up the bed is the next thing you should do in a bedroom. If fresh linens are present, you will need to put them on. If fresh linens are not present, then just make up the bed. We highly recommend using two people. Otherwise, you will waste a lot of time doing it by yourself. 4. Prior to removing the dirty linens, you need to pay attention to how the bed is made, how it looks, and where pillows are located. The goal is to make the bed look exactly the same after you change the linens. Customers will immediately notice if the bed looks different or if it doesn't look neat. 5. Now it's time to remove the dirty linens. Remove pillowcases, sheets, and blankets. These dirty linens need to be placed in the customer's dirty clothes hamper or in their laundry room. You are not responsible for washing them. 6. Putting on the new linens starts with the fitted sheet. Stretch this sheet around all four corners of the mattress. Make sure to pull and tuck the sheet under the mattress as much as possible. This decreases the chance it will come untucked when the customer gets in bed. 7. Next up is the top sheet. Place this flatly over the fitted sheet. Make sure it is stretched and smooth. Also, make sure it fits evenly over the bed. You don't want one side of the bed having more of the sheet visible than the other side. 8. Now you will need to put all the blankets back on the bed. Smooth the blankets over the top of the sheet. Tuck the blankets and top sheet under the mattress at the end of it. 9. Lay the bedspread over the top of the mattress, making sure it covers all the blankets evenly and is smooth and neat. 10. Finally, put the new pillowcases on the pillows. 11. Remember when you paid attention to how the bed looked before you started changing the linens? That's how you want the bed to look now. It should look the same as before, and it should look neat and crisp. 12. After changing the linens, use your extend duster to clean around the top of the walls near the ceiling and down to the floor. You will want to pay special attention to the corners since cobwebs tend to concentrate there. Don't forget to dust along the bottom of furniture and under the bed since these areas tend to accumulate a lot of dirt and debris. Remember to go around the room in the same direction, left to right or right to left, so you don't miss anything. 13. Next up is the ceiling fan. Clean the bottom and top of each fan blade. Gently clean the light fixture in the middle of the fan. 14. Now that the high parts of the walls are cleaned, you will need to clean any light fixtures present. This is best done using a lamb's wool duster. Be very careful doing this since the glass and light bulbs in these fixtures can be broken easily. 15. Now it's time to dust. Using your lamb's wool duster, you will need to clean around any windows. This includes the blinds, window sills, and window frames. 16. You also need to dust any shelves or other furniture. Pay special attention to the nightstands next to the bed. Customers can quickly notice if these areas are not cleaned thoroughly. 17. Dusting also includes the tops of door frames, the doors themselves, and baseboards. Use a damp rag if needed. 18. Since you already have a damp rag, it's a good time to clean any electrical outlet plates and light switches removing fingerprints and smudges. 19. Take the trash and dump it into a consolidated trash bag you are using to put all trash in. 20. Floors are the last area to clean. Vacuum the floors first, paying special attention to the corners and areas under the bed. 21. Mopping is generally not performed in bedrooms because most bedrooms have carpet. However, if the floors need mopping, then follow the instructions we covered in the previous sections. 
22. Now that everything is cleaned, it is also a good time to look around and double check your work. Has everything been cleaned and does it look neat? Congratulations, you have now been trained on the proper way to clean a bedroom. Once you have finished cleaning a house, your job there is almost complete. But these last few minutes might be considered some of the most important in a home. This is your final chance to make sure everything looks good and to ensure the customer is happy with the job you did. You learned previously how important it is to double check your work as you go along. Since you did this before leaving each room, then your exit should be quicker. If you followed this rule, then you know all the rooms look clean and neat. That means the only area left to double check is the room where you are exiting. This would typically be the living room, but in some cases could be a side door into the kitchen. Regardless of where you exit the home, you must double check this last room before you remove supplies. Now you should take all supplies and equipment to your vehicle. Make sure you are not leaving something in the customer's home. It may be a piece of equipment or a type of supply needed later in the day. If you leave something in a house, then you may not be able to get that until the customer comes back home. Don't forget to look around for any rags you may have laid out. A dirty rag left in a home would not look professional. Remember to take the trash outside to the customer's large receptacle. Lastly, review the customer notes. How do they want you to leave the house? Do you lock the door? Do you leave it unlocked? Are there pets that need to be let back inside? Do you need to set the alarm? All these things are very important. It would be disappointing if you provided the customer a thorough cleaning yet forgot to do something important like set the alarm. None of your hard work would matter to the customer if they became unhappy because you forgot to lock the door or set the alarm. In this section, we are going to provide you with some helpful hints to make your job easier. There will be pointers on specific ways to clean, common complaints received from customers, 
and areas that are often overlooked in a cleaning. This list is based off of many years of professional cleaning experience and is intended to help you keep customers happy. Inside a home. One, pace yourself while cleaning. Remember that your work needs to be consistent for the whole day, so don't exert all your energy at once. You need to maintain a high level of thoroughness at every house you clean. Two, never backtrack. Completely finish cleaning a room before moving on to another room. You don't want to waste valuable time going back into a room that has already been cleaned. Three, make everything look neat. After you finish cleaning a room, it should look neat and clean. No matter how clean a room may be, the customer will always look at that room differently if it doesn't look neat. Take just a little time to straighten things. Four, put things back where you found them. If you move something, then make sure to put it back in the exact same spot. Customers will notice if things are not put back in their original spots. Five, do not clean anything that isn't scheduled without first communicating it with your manager. You don't want to perform work on something that isn't authorized. If a customer asks you to clean something out of the ordinary, politely tell them that you need to contact your manager first. Six, don't let devices distract you. This means you shouldn't talk on your mobile phone while cleaning. It also means you shouldn't watch TV or an iPad while cleaning. Stay focused on your job of cleaning. Seven, always be aware of your time. You need to frequently check the time while cleaning so you know how well you are progressing. Being aware of your progress will assist management in scheduling and possibly providing help to you if needed. Eight, use long strokes when cleaning with a lamb's wool duster. If you flip the duster back and forth, you will spread dust everywhere. Long strokes help keep the dust on the duster. Nine, do not clean any electronic devices. You should never clean TV screens, computers, tablets, stereos, or other electronic devices. If you attempt to clean any electronics, you risk damaging those devices. 10. Do not unplug any electronic devices. If all sockets are unavailable and you need to unplug something, make sure it isn't something like a TV or computer. Lamps are generally safe items to unplug. Just make sure to plug them back up when finished. 11. Always vacuum out of a room. Start in the furthest part of the room and work your way out. Vacuum slowly using long strokes so that you clean effectively and leave vacuum marks on carpet. Do not walk over carpeting that has already been vacuumed. When vacuuming a non-carpeted floor, make sure to clean under the edges and corners of rugs. 13. Do not take anything out of a home that doesn't belong to you or Enovana Green Cleaning. This is considered theft. Even if you see something that looks like trash, do not take it. You are not allowed to ask for anything from the customer, but if they offer you something, you are allowed to accept it. 14. Always contact your manager if you break something. This will allow them to contact the customer. Customers tend to be more understanding if they are told in advance when something is broken as opposed to just finding a broken item. 15. Do not jerk an electrical cord out of a wall. You must remove any cords using the plastic base of the cord. If you pull it out using just the cord, you could potentially damage the cord, causing an electrical fire or hurt yourself. 16. Change mop heads at each home, or more frequently if needed. You should never keep mopping when the water is dirty. This will only make your job harder and the floors dirtier. Common Complaints 1. Corners and hard-to-reach areas of floors. Examples include the bottom of the cabinets in the kitchen, under tables, and the corners of hardwood floors. Pay special attention to these areas when vacuuming and mopping. Use a damp rag with your hand if necessary to ensure these areas are cleaned thoroughly. Two, window blinds. Make sure to use long strokes with your duster over each slat. Don't forget to clean both sides of the blinds. Don't just shake your duster blindly over the set of blinds. Be specific and focused on each blind slat. Three, Outside of cabinets. It is easy to forget cleaning the outside of cabinets. However, it is very important to do this. Using a damp rag will help you clean these cabinets better. Four, things look messy. Make sure to straighten items while cleaning. Take a look at the completed room before you leave. Does it look neat? Warnings. One, 
do not use vinegar on anything except mirrors, glass surfaces, and non-carpeted flooring. Vinegar can cause damage to certain types of counters and furniture. That's why you should only use vinegar on these areas. 2. Do not use Castile soap on floors. This will make the floors slick. It could also leave bubbles on the floor, which could cause damage. 3. Do not use baking soda on anything other than sinks, showers, and bathtubs. Baking soda can cause damage to other surfaces by scratching them. 4. Do not clean toilets and other items with the same tools. Anything used to clean toilets should be kept separate from everything else. This includes the tools, rags, and anything else that comes into contact with toilets. 5. Do not pour dirty mop water outside of a home. This includes the driveway, grass, and plants. It should be poured down a sink drain inside the home. This is now the conclusion of the training video. Thank you for taking the time to learn about Enovana Green Cleaning and our way of making the planet a cleaner place. We hope that you found this video to be useful. Ultimately, you are our most valuable asset. Welcome to the Enovana Green Cleaning team.